Hey everybody, this is part two of my response to a video posted by at TikTok Theologic that is criticizing my video number McClellan 1768. Also, the passage says that they were discovered, they were found. So this is inferring a consensual contact in which they get caught. There's absolutely no such inference whatsoever intended by the use of the verb matzah to find. This is just pointing out that they were discovered in the act. Uh, whereas the laws about when this happens in the city versus in the country don't have anyone discovering it. It's an accusation that is made later. Interesting. Dan's leaving out the fact that the word ana is also used in this passage earlier in regards to a consensual relationship in verse 24, where it says he humbled his neighbor's wife. Once again, it's not consensual because the notion of consent didn't exist back then. And as I pointed out, it means to violate. It does not mean to humble. She has been violated here. This can't be missed here, that anything outside of marriage is considered a man violating the woman. Exactly. Because her consent is utterly immaterial. Aside from the fact that Dan has completely ignored the fact that if somebody commits sexual assault, they are going to get stoned. So this is begging the question. Dan imposes his own views on the text right here. And there's a reason he is not telling you what the majority of the scholarship says regarding this text. I am sharing precisely the consensus view. We have to remember that Deuteronomy means second law. It was given to the generation about to enter the promised land about 40 years after they had initially received. No, it was composed beginning in the late 7th century under the reign of Josiah and accumulated more and more literary layers over the next century or two. Most scholars tie verse 28 and 29 back to Exodus 22, verse 16 through. No, most scholars point out that the covenant code has a related law, but they also point out that there are fundamental differences between what is being addressed and how it is being addressed. It says, if a man entices a virgin who is not betrothed and lies with her, he shall surely pay the bride price for her to be his wife. So notice it says that the man entices her. That is why the commentaries, including the critical ones, say that verse 28 and 29 is dealing with a seductor, not an assaulter. I'm curious what all these critical commentaries are because it's not what I'm finding. Um, I mean, this is the brand new SBL study Bible. And the note here says seizes, violated, compare 2114. The wording indicates coercion. But biblical law does not sharply distinguish between rape and seduction of an unbetrothed woman. As I've pointed out, rape was not a category anciently because the consent of the passive receptive sexual object simply did not matter. But let's take a look at some others. Here is the commentary from the fifth edition of the new Oxford Annotated Bible. These conditions correspond to Middle Assyrian laws section A55, which implies forced rape. In contrast, Exodus 22, 16 through 17 specifies intercourse with, but not forced rape of, a quote, virgin who is not engaged. Here is the commentary from the Jewish Study Bible, the seizure and rape of a virgin who is not engaged. Here's Tige's commentary from the JPS Torah commentary series. This whole section is labeled rape of an unengaged virgin, verses 28 and 29. Here we have Dwayne Christensen's commentary on Deuteronomy from the Word Biblical Commentary series, and this section is labeled Rape of an Unengaged Virgin. The man is fined. And there's further commentary from Dwayne a few pages down. If a man rapes an unbetrothed woman in the city, it is considered seduction requiring marriage and paying the girl's father 50 pieces of silver, verses 28 through 29, as a dowry. And we got Peter Craigie's commentary from the New International Commentary on the Old Testament, verses 28 and 29. The rape of a single woman. The man uses force on the woman who is a virgin and is not betrothed to a man. The two are discovered while the crime is being committed. The closest I could come to something I would consider a critical commentary, agreeing with your side, doesn't agree. This is Nelson's commentary on Deuteronomy from the Old Testament library. In the case of the virgin who is not engaged, verses 28 through 29, there is no question of a capital offense because no marriage or betrothal has been compromised. So no, rape of an unbetrothed woman is not equivalent to murder. It's not a capital offense at all. The issue rather is the loss or reduction in value of her bride price, and it is the father who is the injured party. We're going to go down a little bit uh, to talk about tafas. When used with people as its object, however, tafas always means hold by force. If something less than forcible rape had been intended, 
why not employ the weaker verb used in verse 25? You know, chazak. Nevertheless, as in the preceding law, the question of rape has nothing essential to do with the crucial point of the offense, which is the diminution of the father's financial stake in his daughter. So again, it was a property crime. And here Nelson is backing away from the categorization of this as rape, which I would argue is because rape wasn't really a category in the ancient world because the consent of the woman was immaterial. And here are a couple of bonuses, one from the edited volume, A Feminist Companion to Exodus Through Deuteronomy. We have Carolyn Pressler's wonderful paper, Sexual Violence and Deuteronomic Law, where she comments Deuteronomy 22, 28 through 29, then has to do with the forcible violation of an unbetrothed girl. And then we can go look in the new Collegeville Bible Commentary, which isn't a critical commentary at all, where it says rape of an unbetrothed virgin incurs a fine upon the man and disallows recourse to divorce, verses 28 through 29, compare 18 through 19. But for all practical purposes, the woman is treated like damaged goods, exactly as I said. It is the academic consensus that Deuteronomy 22, verses 28 through 29, treat the crime of sexually assaulting a woman who is neither married nor betrothed. It is the academic consensus that these verses treat the crime as a property crime against the father, which is why the punishment is forced marriage and not death.